All the world's richest live in Silicon Valley. Some reside in their own dens around the world. We are talking about insanely rich criminals whose net worth will make some of our annuals look like peanuts. Drug trade, real estate scams, money laundering, illegal weaponry, and other unfathomable notoriety. These are people who found out through their own exploits that the good way is not the only way to shoot to the top. Yes, crime does pay up sometimes, but how much and for how long? We find out in this top trending list of the richest criminals of all time. Number 1. Al Capone, $100 million a year. If the name doesn't ring a bell, Al Capone was nicknamed Scarface. The gangster of barrels rose to undiluted financial stardom during the Prohibition era. Born to Italian parents in Brooklyn, New York, Capone built his empire in Chicago, Illinois. He and his organization, the Chicago Outfit, supplied bootlegged alcohol to almost every state in the United States at a time when the transport and sale of alcohol was illegal in the country. Capone's business model solidified as his product market fit found takers all around. At his peak in the late 1920s, Capone raked in roughly $100 million every year, which is almost equal to a billion dollars today. Capone's crime story began when he moved to Chicago and became the bodyguard for Johnny Torrio, who was heading the illegal alcohol supply market at that time. After a near-death experience in a street war between rival gangs, Torrio retired and Capone took control of the business. Overambitious as he was, Capone used extremely violent methods for business expansion. He even managed to maintain a larger-than-life philanthropic figure in the public with generous donations and cigar-chomping public appearances at ballgames. But the brutally violent death of seven rival gang members became Capone's undoing. Immediately after that, almost every important person in the state wanted to see him in jail. He was booked for tax evasion by the federal authorities and after subsequent trials in courts, handed an 11-year sentence. Capone suffered a stroke in January 25, 1947 and died of cardiac arrest the same day. Here's some cool news. Tom Hardy is playing Al Capone in the upcoming movie Fonzo. Number 2. Susumu Ishii, 4 billion in global assets. Meet the Japanese Yakuza Don, who insisted words do more damage than bullets. Susumu Ishii was a Japanese Navy fighter pilot who was a part of the Suicide Kamikaze Torpedo Unit during World War II. He made it through the war and rose in ranks to become the second godfather of the Inigawa Kai Gang. Just like his stint at the Torpedo Unit, Ishii pulled off miracles here too. In the 1980s, his net worth rocketed up to $4 billion, which he primarily raised through loans, international investments, and real estate scams. Ishii was not your regular gangster firing and killing at will. In fact, he avoided violence to the largest extent. He inspired the Japanese Yakuza to not resort to violence as long as there was room for talk. He learnt much of his self-control when he was in prison between 1978 and 1984 after conviction in a gambling scam. Shortly after his release, he bought, well, rather transferred to himself, the ownership of a luxurious golf club. Japan's high and mighty queued up for membership at the golf club to the tune of 200,000 each. Ishii's wallet was just about warming up. After the jumpstart in Japan, the Yakuza godfather went global. He invested in Korea, Hong Kong, Monaco, and the United States, and built connections so dense that at one time his group was professionally advised by George H.W. Bush's brother, Prescott Bush. After attaining such global influence, violence crept back into the Yakuza ranks. Pay off or shut down became their standard way of dealing with just about anything. In the late 80s, Ishii lost most of his money when the bubble economy burst. He died on September 3, 1991. The funeral was attended by over 6,000 people. Number 3. Leona Helmsley, $8 billion. Only little people pay taxes. It was this aphorism that identified and defined Leona Helmsley, aka the Queen of Mean. Maybe the same conviction also landed her a jail term of 11 years. But Helmsley used her influences to bottle the sentence down to 19 months nonetheless. It was estimated that in the late 1980s, Leona and her husband accumulated as much as $2 billion, largely through New York's real estate scene. At their peak, the couple owned properties like the Flatiron Building and the Empire State Building. 
U.S. Attorney and New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani indicted the Helmleys and a couple of their close associates on tax evasion charges in 1988. There is word that they were also charged with extortion. Giuliani asserted that the couple had used their real estate money and influence to buy luxuries like a $1 million marble dance floor and a silver dock worth $45,000 for their Connecticut home. Yes, you heard that bit right. A $1 million marble dance floor. When Leona met real estate entrepreneur Harry Hemsley in 1968, she was working as a real estate broker. A couple of years later, she was the vice president of Harry's firm, Brown Harris Stevens. She was already a millionaire by that time. Harry divorced his wife of 33 years and got married to Leona in 1972. Leona Helmsley died on August 20th, 2007, with a net worth of $8 billion. Number 4. Carlos Enrique Lader Rivas, $2.7 billion. A drug lord controlling an island, a small army of men and dogs, a fleet of airplanes, and an incredible sense of vengeance against a whole nation. Carlos Lader's story looks straight out of a Colombian movie, if they make movies of that kind there. Unlike some criminals on the list, Colombian gangster and drug lord Carlos Enrique Lader Rivas is still around, but thankfully nowhere near you. He is serving a lifetime plus 135-year sentence in the United States. Among his most infamous achievements, he was the founder of the Medellin Cartel, the conglomeration of drug barons from South America, who collectively controlled the supply of an estimated $60 million worth of illegal substances each day. Medellin Cartel was so influential that another of its founders, Jose Gonzalo Rodriguez Gacha, was featured on the Forbes annual list of billionaires in 1988. Ladere was hell-bent on smuggling cocaine into the United States and left no check unsigned to do it. He even bought a private jet and an entire Bahamian island, Norman Kay, to create additional routes of smuggling. Ladere is said to have spent an estimated $4.5 million on the island alone. It included a yacht club, a marina, an airstrip, and almost 100 private homes. It was this island, Norman Kay, that later became Ladere's main drug smuggling hub. At the height of Norman Kay's functionality, Ladere earned a major part of his estimated net worth of $2.7 billion. It is said that he commanded a fleet of aircraft, and the 1,000-meter-long airstrip on the island was heavily manned by bodyguards, radars, and Doberman attack dogs. Number 5. Kun Sa, $5 billion. No government can prevent death and destruction when a band of 16-year-olds pick up arms and form a private militia. So before Afghanistan became the number one opium producer in the world in the 21st century, the Golden Triangle in Southeast Asia, comprising of Laos, Thailand, and Myanmar, used to be the global den of opium supply. With titles like The Opium King and The Lord of the Golden Triangle attached to his resume, Kun Sa was the most feared name in Burma for a long time. Born as Zhang Kaifu to a Chinese father and Shan mother, Kun Sa built his own army of militants and fought for the liberation of the Shan state in Thailand. But unlike other hot-headed rebels, Sa was smart enough not to throw everything away at war in the open field. While he first joined and later claimed independence from the separatist outfit Kuomintang, Sa also served in the nation's military when it suited him. In his 40s, Kun Sa invested heavily into opium supply and controlled around 45% of the New York's opium trade for a good two decades. During the same period, Sa had direct or indirect influence of over 70% of the opium production in the Golden Triangle. With an army of 20,000 men better equipped than the Burmese military and a U.S. bounty of $2 million on his head, the Opium King commanded a staggering net worth of $5 billion. It is reported that the Thai military once commissioned a 39-member unit of elite guerrilla rangers to secretly assassinate Sa. The attack did not just fail, Saw's personal secret service wiped out the entire elite unit of rangers. Number 6. The Ochoa Brothers, 6 billion. Seems like the Medellin cartel made enough money to replace the oil economy with clean energy. Jorge Luis Ochoa and his brothers Fabio and Juan David were among the founding members of the Medellin cartel. The same gang that produced Carlos Lader, Pablo Escobar, and Jose Gonzalo Rodriguez. Like almost every other drug and warlord, the Ochoa brothers came from a humble family of cattle breeders. The brothers ventured into drugs and started off as street peddlers, 
and then took the highway the moment the Medellin cartel swung into action. Their fortunes rose meteorically, and the three brothers controlled 30% of the cartel's cocaine business. The fate of the Ochoa brothers ran downhill just as swiftly as it had shot up. After Colombian President Belisario Betancur declared that illegal drug traffickers will be extradited to the United States, with Carlos Lader topping the list. The Ochoa brothers fled to Panama, along with other members of the cartel. Jorge Ochoa is still alive, while Fabio was extradited, and Juan was killed. There's never a sweet end to drugs. Number 7. Victor Bout, 6 Billion a former Soviet military translator with a terrible conscience, Victor Bout bolted himself into fame and untold wealth when he used his multiple air transport companies to supply illegal weapons from the Soviet to Africa after the end of communism in Eastern Europe. And he didn't do it the discreet way. Bout's methods were so rash and violent that he was infamously nicknamed the Merchant of Death. At his peak, Bout had contacts around the globe especially with countries that had strong trade ties to Africa. He was accused of extortion, money laundering, and even sabotage. All of this made him a fortune of six billion dollars. But like all tales of easy honey, Bout was stung at the end. He was convicted in the United States for conspiring to kill U.S. officials and aiding the terrorist organization FARC. In 2012, Victor Bout was sentenced to 25 years in prison. In 2016, he dared President Trump to pardon him after taking office. Number 8. Daoud Ibrahim 6.7 Billion Daoud Ibrahim is the one name everybody hates in India. Gangster, underworld don, arms smuggler, and real estate scammer Daoud Ibrahim was the mastermind behind the 1933 Mumbai serial bombings a coordinated, first-of-its-kind series of 12 explosions in one day that left over 700 people injured and 257 dead. The world has never seen anything like this before, and the gangster has been on the run ever since. Dawood operated through his crime organization named D Company and sourced local resources and information from multiple smaller subsidiaries. After his initial rise in India, he quickly worked upon his real estate game in the Middle East, mostly from outside of India while he was on the run. Much of the 6.7 billion that he made was chiefly through his real estate ventures. As of now, Ibrahim has been declared an international terrorist by the United States, and there's a bounty of $25 million on his capture. And if you think you're up for the job, there's strong intel evidence from multiple global agencies that suggest the gangster lives in a heavily protected area in Karachi, Pakistan. Number 9. Pablo Escobar, 25 billion. Pablo Escobar is perhaps the only Colombian drug lord whose popularity outgrew that of the Medellin cartel. Escobar was born in a Colombian village and spent the early years of his childhood without electricity. As the head of the Medellin cartel, Escobar indulged in drug trafficking, smuggling, bombings, assassinations, murder, and racketeering. During Escobar's peak, the Medellin cartel smuggled 15 tons of cocaine every day. The snooping officials were bribed off with either money in their pockets or bullets in their heads. Plata. O plomo. At the time of his death in 1993, Escobar had amassed a net worth of $30 billion. In 1989, Forbes magazine listed him as the seventh richest man in the world with direct control of over 80% of the global cocaine market. Besides other things, Escobar was also known to be a loving family man. He reportedly literally burnt cash to the tune of $1 million just so his daughter could stay warm while they were on the run. Sounds like a good dad, but it doesn't make him less of a criminal. Number 10. Amado Carrillo Fuentes, 25 billion. Mexican drug lord Amado Fuentes was a villain straight out of a Hollywood spy movie. He owned a fleet of 727 jets, eliminated anyone that looked or smelled suspicious, and used the Colombian channel to launder money for his jets and drugs. He is reported to have caused thousands of deaths and was constantly on the run, being chased by United States and Mexican authorities. Fuentes was also known to have undergone multiple plastic surgeries to change his appearance. It was shortly after one of these surgeries in 1997 that he died from poor health. 
At the time of his death, his net worth was estimated to be $25 billion. While Amado Fuentes was not the only drug baron to own private planes, he was known as the Lord of the Skies for his overwhelming fleet of jets, which were exclusively used in the drug trade. That's about it, folks. The 10 richest criminals of all time. Lots of money, but no happy endings. Is there any other gunslinging Richie Rich that we missed out from including in the list? Let's hear about them in the comment section below.